Hi everybody, my name is Abby and I'm a second year genetic counseling student. You've happened upon this video because one, you're interested in genetic counseling, you know what it is. Two, someone has once mentioned genetic counseling to you and you're curious for more information. Or three, like me when I was a college senior, you're graduating and have no idea what to do next. Either way, this video is for you. We're gonna talk about this amazing profession of genetic counseling, what it is, where it's going, and then how you can apply to be a genetic counselor yourself. So what is a genetic counselor? A genetic counselor is a trained health professional who helps patients understand their genetic health. This could mean ordering tests, interpreting test results, and then communicating those results to the patient and to their provider. So first, a little basic science lesson. The study of genetics is the study of our DNA. Our DNA is in every cell in our body, and it's our instruction code for how we grow, develop, and function. Next, think about who becomes a genetic counselor. There are specific personality traits and strengths that would flourish in this job. Thinking about yourself, are you someone who enjoys hard science, attention to detail, has a concern for others and wants to help them, has integrity, values cooperation and teamwork, and is a dependable person? Last, how? Think about how to become a genetic counselor. First, you need a four-year undergraduate degree. Usually this is in some kind of biological sciences or psychology, but any degree will work as long as you have the right prerequisite classes. Next, a two-year graduate program to get your master's in genetic counseling. After that, you have to take a certification exam to become a certified genetic counselor. Additionally, some states also require a state licensure. This is just a little extra paperwork after you come certified. Next, let's talk about areas of practice. The best part about genetic counseling is the variability in the field and the areas where we can practice. We think of the three main ones as clinical, industry, and laboratory, but there's new specialties popping up every year. So for clinical, these are what we considered the big three. These are what you're gonna to need to do rotations in while you're in graduate school. Cancer, pediatrics, and prenatal. In cancer, you're helping patients understand their risk for hereditary cancer and also their family's risk if they were found to be carriers of a cancerous mutation. Next, pediatrics. This is meeting with pediatric patients and their families, helping them understand their child's genetic condition. Third, prenatal. This is meeting with women and couples before and during their pregnancy to help them understand their risks for a genetic condition, as well as talking about screening and testing options for their babies. Next, industry. So this could mean working in a large laboratory, working in a insurance uh, company, or maybe even starting your own genetic consult business. Some of the roles that these GCs have are management, marketing, test development, research, test interpretation and analysis, education, and telehealth. Next, we have laboratory. So this is a GC who works in a genetic testing lab. Some of these roles can overlap with an industry GC, but there are some specific roles that just lab GCs do. One of those is variant interpretation and writing reports that we send out to patients. There's also test development, test utilization, research, education for physicians and other healthcare providers, and then also working with insurance companies to make sure that these tests are authorized and paid for by insurance. So this last part here are all the amazing subspecialties. Uh, as we learn more about genetics, we are able to work it into all the other different medical fields. Some of them include infertility genetics, cardiovascular, cystic fibrosis, hematology, metabolic, neurogenetics, and even post-mortem genetic testing. All right, let's move on to job outlook. When considering a future career, it's important to consider the job statistics. And luckily, genetic counseling has got some great stats. The average salary for a genetic counselor is 81,000 per year. There's currently 2,600 open spots for genetic counseling. And in the next 10 years, it's expected to grow by 21%. GCs usually work in a full-time role, but there's also a chance for them to work part-time. This schedule usually involves a Monday through Friday, eight to five, but this can vary depending on where you work and if you choose to work independently as a consultant for genetic counseling. Next, let's talk about schooling. So the big question is, how do you become a genetic counselor? First is getting that undergraduate degree. 
Most students who apply to graduate programs have degrees in biology, biological sciences, or psychology, but really any degree counts as long as you have the right prerequisites that your graduate program requires. Next, graduate programs. There are 53 different programs in the US and Canada, and these programs are 21 to 24 months full time. And these programs are giving students classes in genetics, counseling, as well as clinical rotations in cancer, pediatrics, and prenatal, as well as maybe some other rotation opportunities. The last thing is that most programs require a thesis or a capstone as a requirement for graduation. Last, certification and licensure. So certification happens after you graduate and you take the American Board of Genetic Counseling exam. This is a 200 question exam with a four hour time limit you need to pass to become a certified genetic counselor. Beyond this, some states also require licensure from their genetic counselors to practice. This just requires a little extra paperwork um, after you get your certification. And last, let's talk about applications. So you want to apply. Here's how to make yourself a standout applicant for graduate programs. One of the first things that programs are looking for is exposure to the field of genetic counseling. Ideally, this would be through job shadowing, a GC who's local to your area. However, these opportunities can be really hard to come by. So supplementing with other ways is a great way to show that you know what genetic counseling is. This could be phone interviews with GCs, watching videos about genetic counseling, or getting a genetic counseling assistant job. Next, we have advocacy work. So this is showing programs that you've worked with people who are going through difficult situations. You've showed skills of empathy and concern for others. Some examples of this is working with women's shelters, uh, support groups, suicide hotlines, or working with sexual assault victims. Next, letters of recommendation. So this is something that really varies program to program the letters they require, and then who writes the letters. So make sure that you're checking on program websites to see what they need for their applications. Some great people to contact when asking for letters of rec are GC, GCs you have shadowed, um, college professors that you've taken multiple classes with or have worked with on research, and then those advocacy supervisors that can talk about the skills that you have when dealing with people in those hard situations. So the last one is program prerequisites. This is something that really varies program to program. So make sure that you know what your program requires before going through the application process. This is specifically thinking about something like a GRE. Some programs require this and others don't. This might actually influence your decision of which programs you wanna apply for. Also programs have different class requirements, things such as developmental biology, psychology, uh, upper level genetics course, also the number of letters of recommendation and who writes them. The most important thing you can do is contact the program if you have questions, look at their websites, see what they require, and then reach out to the program leadership because they wanna talk to you and they wanna make sure that you feel prepared going into the application process. All right, guys, thanks for listening today. And if there's two things I want you to take away from this video, it's one, that genetic counseling is an amazing profession with a lot of variability and it's growing every year. Two, if you're interested in applying to programs, reach out to those programs, talk to them, and make sure that you're qualified to apply before you do. I'm gonna be linking this presentation under the video as well as some more informational links for your own personal research.